What is going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to start a new tutorial series here on Neural9 about data structures in Python. The goal here is to implement the various data structures that we know, linked lists and stacks and heaps and binary search trees and so on, and to also discuss the runtime complexities of the various operations that we can perform on these data structures. Today in this first episode, we're going to get started with linked lists and doubly linked lists. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to start off this tutorial series by implementing a linked list and a doubly linked list in Python today. Now, as I already mentioned, the goal of this tutorial series is to understand the data structures and also the runtime complexities of the operations that we perform on these data structures by implementing them from scratch. So we're not going to use any packages, we're not going to import any data structures, we're going to build them from scratch in Python using classes. Now, I'm going to always briefly explain the data structures so that you know what it is about in theory before we implement it. But if you want to have a more detailed explanation, I have a tutorial series or a course, you could say, on algorithms and data structures. There you can find more details about them. But I'm going to give you a brief sketch of the basic data structure every time before we start coding it. So let us get started briefly here with the linked list. I'm going to sketch it out. It's quite simple. The basic idea of a linked list is that we have so called notes. So we have, for example, let's say this is a note and this note has a value, for example, the number 10. Now this note also has a pointer or a reference to another note to the next note, so to say. And this note then again, also could have a value 20. And it points to another note and so on and so forth, they can have different values. And at some point, some node will have a pointer to none. In Python, it is none. In other languages, it's a null pointer, or whatever. It's basically the end of the list. So a linked list works like this, you have nodes, and one node points to the next node, this node points to another node, and so on until we get to the end of the chain until we get to the end of the linked list. And this structure, of course, means that we have to perform different operations in different ways. For example, if I want to see if a certain value is part of the list, I cannot just jump to that value, I have to uh, go through all the values. So in order to see if 30 is part of the list, I cannot just look at the list and see it, I have to say, Okay, let's go to the first note, is it 30? No, jump to the next note, is it 30? No, jump to the next note, is it 30? Yes, I have 30 in the list. Um, and because of that, of course, this is going to have a runtime complexity, which is in O of n linear. By the way, if you don't know anything about runtime complexity, I would recommend that you watch some video, you can watch my video or another video that explains the basic idea of runtime complexity, because I don't want to go into too much detail here on the theory uh, in, in this tutorial series. But the basic idea is how many steps you need to perform how the complexity of your uh, of your algorithm increases when you increase the input size. So in this case, the list has n elements, so three elements. And in the worst case, I have to go through all three elements to find the element I'm looking for. Because of that, we have a runtime complexity of O of n, uh, a worst case complexity. Uh, that's the basic idea. Uh, so that's a linked list, a doubly linked list is the same thing, just that we have two pointers. So every node also points to the previous node. So it's basically like this. And then here we have a none pointer, uh, or none reference again. So it's just, um, it, it's just in both directions. And this, of course, makes it easier to prepend or, or to, uh, to do certain things. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's just the difference here. So we have two references, we have going into to both directions, that's a doubly linked list. And if it's, uh, if it's just going into a single direction, we have a normal uh, linked list. And this is what we're going to implement in Python. And we're going to also implement a bunch of different operations. So for example, I have my code prepared here, we're going to um, traverse it, we're going to display it, we're going to see if it contains some values, we're going to calculate the length, or we're going to to get the length, we're going to append, we're going to prepend, we're going to insert at a specific position, we're going to delete, we're going to pop a specific index, so remove an element not by value, but by position, we're going to get and um, yeah, that's actually it for the linked list. So let us get started now with a new uh, Python file, I'm going to call this linked list py. And we're going to start with the most important class here, which is the node itself. So we're going to create a class node. And this class node is very simple. It's just a simple constructor and init method, where we say we want to have a value. 
and every node is going to be initialized with a value and a reference to another node. So we're going to say here self dot value is going to be equal to the value and self dot next in the beginning is going to be none. So every node when we create it is not going to have a next node. That's all a node is a value and a pointer to a next node. But by default, this is going to be empty, it's going to be none. Now that is the node. The linked list is then another class which utilizes the node class. So we're going to say now class linked list. And we're going to say that when we initialize a linked list for the first time, we're going to set um, we're going to initialize the head node. So a linked list has a head node, which is the uh, beginning node, we're going to just take this and uh, set it to none in the beginning, because if the list is empty, we, do, we don't have any, any nodes in there. So we have none. But once we add a node to the list, the head node is going to be that first node and every other node is going to come afterwards, unless of course, we prepend or insert. Um, so we're going to say here self head equals none. And that is actually all we need, we need the head of the list, and then we can perform everything uh, from the head onwards. Now, um, what we're going to do now first here before I go into the other functions, even though, you know, I'm going to implement a couple of functions, maybe before we start with the implementation, a good idea would be to list the functions that we're going to implement, uh, without any code yet. So one function I'm going to implement is the dunder wrapper function. This is just a representation. This is going to be traversing the list and printing the values displaying the values that are part of the list. So here we're going to just say pass for now. Uh, we're also going to implement the contains dunder, which is of course going to check if a value exists in the list. This is what I showed you in my paint here. Um, a minute ago, and then we also are going to implement the length dunder or the len dunder, which is going to give us the size of the list. And then we're going to implement a couple of methods uh, that are not under so one is going to be the append method, obviously, this is going to add a value to the list, it's going to add it at the end of the list. Um, so for that, we're going to do pass as well, we're going to also have prepend, which is the opposite, we're going to insert it in the beginning. And this is what I meant when you have um, when you have a doubly linked list, uh, actually, I, I messed it up, it's not a prepend, the prepend is easy with the uh, normal linked list as well, because you just have to create a new node and let it point to the he uh, to the head node, and then make it the head node. But if you want to append in the end, then a doubly linked list is useful because you all also have a tail. So you can do that in constant time as well. But we're going to take a look at that here in a second. Uh, so prepend is the opposite, you insert it as the first element, and then we have also the method insert, the insert method um, is adding a value to a specific index to a, a specific position. Um, and then we're also going to have delete pop get so delete is going to be delete by value. So we provide a value and this value has to be deleted from uh, from the linked list, then pop is going to do that with an index. And get is going to give us the value of a specific index of a specific position. And then we're also going to have a simple uh, print function, which is going to be quite similar to the representation function, if not the same. And then finally, we're going to have a section down here, if name equals main. And here we're going to then create our class and use it. So these are the methods that we're going to implement. Now, if you want to take it easy, you can also drop some of them, you don't need prepend, you don't need insert necessarily whatever you want to do, it's going to be quite a lot of code here now. But um, you can also choose to just implement a couple of them. I would like to start with the append function, because that's the most um, the, the first thing that you want to do with a list, you have an empty list, you want to add some elements to them uh, to the list. So how can we append a new element to a linked list? Now, obviously, if the head is none, I just have to set the head to the new node. So I can already have a case, if self dot head is none. So if I don't have anything in the list, all I have to do is I have to create a new node and make it the head of the list. So I can say self dot head is equal to node value. That's quite easy. Now, what happens if I already do have a head? Well, then I just have to go uh, to the next element as long as there is a next element. And at the end, when I see that now there is no longer a next element, I just have to create a new node and put it there. 
So this means I can say something like last equals self dot head. So I start with a head. And I say while my last element that I looked at has a next element. So in the beginning, it's the head, does the head have a next element? If yes, go to it. Um, otherwise, append it already. So if there is a next element, I said last equal to this ne uh, next element. So I go further and further into the list until there is no next element. And what I do then is I say last dot next since last dot next at this point will be none is going to be equal to a note uh, given a value. So maybe, um, maybe I will do this here now with a graphical explanation. Just to give you the basic intuition, we have an empty list. So what do I do, I create a new note and give it a value. That's my append if the list is empty. Now, here, my next pointer points to nothing. So what I do if I want to append 20, for example, is I go to this, I say while this has a next, oh, it doesn't have one. So what I do is I create a new note here. Now, let's say I want to append five as a value, what I do is I go into the list, I see, okay, it does have a next element. So I set last equal to the next one. Okay, 20. Does this have a next element? No. Okay, perfect, then create a new note and give it five. <clears throat> now, this here definitely has a runtime complexity of O of n. So we have to go through all the elements here necessarily to be able to append it. We don't have a uh, we don't have a reference to the last element, we don't have a tail element. So because of that, we cannot just um, append it in constant time, we have to go through all the elements to get to the end until we can then append a new element. So this is going to definitely have a runtime or actually, I'm not going to say runtime complexity, just O of n linear time. <clears throat> and this has a worst case complexity, which is linear, but it also has an average and best case complexity, which is linear because you will have to go through all the elements, it doesn't matter, it's not a, a matter of chance or uh, how well the data is structured or aligned, it's just you will have to go through all the data. So this is a linear runtime complexity here. Now, the prepend function is quite simple when we're talking about a linked list, because all we have to do is we have to create a new note, we have to make this new note point to the head. And then we have to make the head, uh, or we have to make this note the new head. So all I have to do is I have to say, first note is going to be equal to a note that has the value that I want to prepend. And then what I want to do is I want to say this first note then should point to the current head. And then the current head should be set to be equal to this first note. That's it. This also works if we have none. Uh, think about it here again, visually. Let's go to my paint. If I have a list like this, what do I have to do to prepend an element? Well, I just create a new note. Let's say I want to give it the value uh, 25, for example. And all I have to do is I have to make it point to the current head. And then I have to say, okay, this is now my head. And if I have none, what do I do? I create a new element and I point to the current head, which is none. still works. So that's quite simple. And this can be done in constant time, the list can be huge, and it's still going to happen in the same amount of time, because it's the same operation. So this has O of one, <coughs> O of one constant time. So linear time, constant time. And this also this is worst case, this is best case, this is average case, because every single time when I prepend a node, I will have to do this one operation, create a node, let it point to the head, make it the head. That's it. Every time the same. Um, yeah, the insert is now a little bit more interesting, because now we're going for a specific index. Now I want to say, um, I want to put it at a specific position. Now we have one special case here, if this position if the index that I'm trying to insert it um, into is zero, then I can just prepend. So I can say if the index that I'm passing here is zero, I can just say self dot prepend value, because then I'm just doing the same thing that I just explained. Otherwise, we're going to, um, to do the following, we're going to say first of all, if I don't have a head, and I not trying so if, if the list is empty, and I'm trying to insert at an index that is not zero, then this should produce a value error, because I'm obviously trying to access a position that doesn't exist. So we're going to also raise an exception here, we're going to say if self dot head is none, 
And since we're not trying to use index zero, I'm going to raise a value error and this value error will say uh, index out of bounce. I'm not sure if the value error here is the correct uh, exception type or error type. But let's just do it like this. So self head is none raise value error. And otherwise, if the head is not none, what we do is we say again, last equals self dot head. And uh, we basically iterate using a full loop for i in range. And now we use the index minus one, because we don't want to go to the element we want to go before that element. Um, and we're going to say if last dot next is none at some point here before I get to the index that I'm trying to get to, I do the same thing as above, I just copy this and I paste it down here. Because this is also a problem I'm trying to go so if I want to insert an index five, I have to go to one position before that because I don't want to go after the point where I want to insert. So I have to go minus one. But if I at this point, it's somewhere Somewhere during this process, if I realize that there is no next element, this means that I don't have enough positions to get to the index that I'm trying to get to. So again, index out of bounds. And if that doesn't happen, then I just say last equals last dot next. And if the whole loop runs without raising an error, then I have the correct position. So what I do is I create a new node. I say this node has the value that I'm trying to insert. And then I say the new node dot next is going to be what this node is currently pointing to as next, I'm going to show you why that is visually here in a second again. And then I let this node here, the last node point to the new node. So the idea here is, if I have, um, let me just take my drawing tablet here. If I'm trying to insert something at this position here, what do I have to do to do that? Well, I create the note, let's say the value is 30 here, I create this new note, what I need to do now is I need to ask, okay, what is the note before me pointing to before myself pointing to so the note that comes before where I want to insert this is 10, 10 is pointing to 20. So I just copy that now I point to 20. And now I say, okay, 10 no longer points to 20, 10 now points to me. This is exactly what we're doing in the code here. This is this year, we create a new node, we point this new node to the note that the last uh, node was pointing to. And we'll let let the last node point to ourselves to the new node. That is it. And this, of course, has linear runtime complexity. In the worst case, I have to go. Um, in the worst case, I have to go through all the elements, because I'm providing an index that's, you know, n or n minus one. So that's linear runtime complexity. Alright, so now we have the various methods to add elements to, um, to the linked list. Now let us talk about the I mean, we're going to do the representation in the end, but let us talk about contains how can I find out if something uh, is part of the list. So this is a true false uh, function or method, this is going to give us either a yes or no. Um, and obviously, we do the same thing that we do when we do the appending just that we can stop um, before that we look for a value. And we can terminate. So I think the average case runtime complexity is n divided by two, so n half, because on average, you will have to go through half of the list to find a value. Uh, but in the worst case, you will have to go through all of the list and you're still not going to find a value. So this has obviously before we even implement this, this has um, linear runtime complexity. Oh, my God, what's happening here? There you go. Okay, so what we do here is obviously same, same concept last is equal to self dot head. And then we say, while last is not none. So while the thing that I'm looking at actually has um, is a note is not empty. I check if the value of this is equal to Oh, actually, we need to pass. We need to pass a value here. So if last value equals that value, we're going to say return true. And um, then we're going to otherwise say that we want to go to the next element. So last equals last up next. And in the end, if I never return true, I have to return false. It's as simple as that. So we just do the exact same thing that I talked about, 
we start here, I'm looking for, let's say 40, which is not part of the list. So I look at this element, no, next, look at this, no, next, look at this, no, next, look, no, look, no, okay, end of the list. Um, at some point, I don't have any, um, any values anymore, I get to this none, and then I have to go, I have to terminate the loop and I return false. And if I find the correct value in between, I just return true and the function or the method uh, terminates. All right. Uh, now for the length, it depends on how you implement the linked list. This is something that you can implement differently. Now, if you just implement it the way that we have implemented it right now, calculating the length of the list has linear time, and it has actually also in the best case linear time. Because what you have to do in order to count how many elements you have is you have to go through all the elements and increase in a counter. So for example, with the current implementation, what we could do is we could say last equals self dot head counter equals zero, while last is not none. We say counter plus equals one, last equals last dot next. And in the end, we return the counter. That is obviously in linear runtime, because, of course, we have to go through all the elements until we get to the last one every single time. So it's not even average or best case in any other, it doesn't even have a different uh, complexity when we look at the best case or the average case, we always have to go through all the elements similar to append. However, you can make this constant if you change something about the class, if you, for example, also keep track of a size. So if you say self dot size is zero, uh, and every time you perform an operation, you update the size, which is not going to change your runtime complexity. Um, you can make this constant. So for example, every time when I append, I can say self dot size equals one. And I can say here when I append this self dot size plus equals one, and so on and so forth. And I do that every time I do that everywhere. So here I also increase here I increase and with all the delete methods that we're going to implement, I decrease. Um, in this way, all I would have to do is I would have to say return self dot size, and that would make it a constant runtime complexity, you can do it like that. I'm going to now keep it uh, like this. It depends on what you want to do. But this is not a bad thing. You know, if you're going to access the length, uh, frequently, it makes sense to have a single integer that represents the size, it doesn't really change the runtime complexity of any function uh, of any method. So that is definitely something that you could be doing, but I want to keep the code simple now. So I'm not going to mess with the size, uh, just to focus on the operation itself. But again, you can make this constant by just updating the number every time the size changes. Um, all right, so let's move on to the delete method. Now the delete method, what it does is obviously it tries to find the element, if it finds it, it updates the pointers accordingly. Uh, in other languages like C, you would have to free the memory in Python, you just ignore it, you just let the uh, notes point to a different note now. But what we do here is basically we say again, last equals self dot head, we start at the beginning. And we say, if last is not none already. Now if it's none, I'm not going to do anything. So I don't even have to have an else branch here, I just say, okay, if it is none, do nothing. Uh, I mean, you could raise an exception, of course, if you want to or an error. Uh, but I'm just going to ignore it. So if you try to delete a value that's not part of the list, I don't care, you, we're not going to do anything. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say if last value is equal to the value, we're going to say uh, self dot head is equal to uh, last dot next. So this is basically if we're finding the value already in the head. Otherwise, if it's not part of the head, we're going to run a while loop while last dot next. I'm not sure right now if this is even a, an efficient implementation. I don't even know if we need this if else statement. But yeah, let's keep it like this. Now I prepared the code already. Um, so while we have a next element, what we're going to do is we're going to say if the value of this next element, so we're already looking at the next element of its value, if that is equal to value, we have to look ahead because we need to perform the operation now. Because if the next element has the value that we're trying to remove, we have to skip it. So we need to say last dot next, I change this now to the next next element. I'm going to show you that visually here again in a second. And then we break out of the loop. What's the logic behind this? 
Um, let let me just again uh, make this a little bit uh, better here. So let's remove this here. Let's say we have. I don't know. It doesn't really matter what kind of values we have here. Uh, pointing to none. Uh, if I want to delete the five, for example, what do I do here? Is I look at the next element. So here at 25, I look at 10. Is 10 five? No, obviously not. So what I do is I go next. At 10, I look at the next element, I see it's five, okay, I want to remove five, how do I do that? All I have to do now in, in Python, at least if I don't have to free memory, is I have to take the pointer that points to five, and make it point to what five is pointing to. So I just have to skip the connection here. I just have to say 10 is now pointing to what five is pointing to. And it cuts the connection here, this connection theoretically still exists. So again, in other programming languages, you would have to free this memory. But now the list is 25, 10, 30, 40. So you just cut the connection here and you redirect it to be uh, pointing to what five is pointing to already. That's, uh, that's the idea here. Um, yeah, this is what we implemented. And of course, this is going to be in linear time. Why? Because in the worst case, you have to go through all the elements to find it. Now, this is not the average case this is not the best case. But the worst case is linear time. Because chances are you're not going to find a value chances are you're going to find a value at the very last position, which means you have to traverse n elements. Uh, for pop, it's different for pop, we have to do it with the index. So again, we have to raise a couple of errors. First of all, if self head is none, we're going to raise an an error right away, we're going to say index out of bounds. Um, otherwise, if the head is not none, we need to go through our iteration again, we need to say self or let's say last equals self dot head. Um, and we're going to say then that um, for I in range, again, index minus one, we're going to we want to go one element before that remember, so that we can skip the connection, we don't want to be at the element we want to remove we want to be one before that, so we can redirect the next pointer. Um, here, we're going to say if last next is none, which means that if I encounter none before I should encounter none, it means I don't have enough uh, elements in the linked list, which means I will raise a value error index out of bounds. And um, otherwise, I'm going to just go to the next element. Um, and what I do then is I say if last next is none, which means that if the next element is exactly the one that I'm trying to um, to remove. So basically, the edge case that it's the last element that is none that shouldn't be none, I still raise a value error. And otherwise, if that's not the case, what I do is I say last dot next is equal to last dot next, next, which is again, the exact same thing that we did here. Only difference is I go index wise. So nothing changes here. I have the same logic, but I just go okay, uh, jump one forward. So if I have a certain index, I just go next, 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 um, index times or index minus one times. And then then I'm at the element that is one before the one that I want to delete, if that one that I want to delete is not none, then I just cut the connection to the next one. That's the same idea. And of course, depending on the index that I provide, this has linear runtime, you can see, with linked lists, we have a lot of linear runtime complexity. Um, yeah, forget, obviously, quite simple, if you want to get a certain value at a certain index, what you do is you say if self head is none. Guess what we raise a value error, same principle. The concept here is the same. The only difference is we don't do anything, we just return the value. Um, so actually, we have the same kind of iteration, we say last equals self dot head, we say for I in range. Uh, now we can use index because we don't need to stop one element before that since we are not trying to perform any operation, we're not trying to change any connection. So we can just say, um, go to the element to the exact element and then say if last next is none at some point here, 
then we're going to say raise value error index out of bounds and uh, otherwise go to the next element so last equals last dot next and if we can do that without any errors the value i'm looking for is going to be the value of the last note i end up at all right and of course guess what depending on the index that i provide this is going to have linear runtime complexity perfect um so now we only have the print and the representation. And actually, it's not really complicated. It's just a styling thing, but it's the same kind of thing. We just iterate over the whole list and we print the element. So we're going to say here, if self head is none, return an empty list or actually a string of an empty list. Otherwise, I do have some issue with my keyboard here. When I press E, sometimes it sends the key twice and sometimes it doesn't send the key. I don't know why that is. I mean, it's, it's a cheap keyboard, but maybe if you know the solution, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, what we do here now is we say last equals self head if it's not none. And then we iterate again, we say we craft a return string, this return string will start with, uh, with a square bracket. And the first value in here, let's make this an F string. The first value in here will obviously be the uh, self dot or last last dot value. Um, no, not return. Sorry, return is not so good. Return string. And uh, now we're going to just iterate again. We're going to say while last has a next element. What we're going to do is we're going to say last equals last dot next, and then we're going to just say return string plus equals uh, F string, and we're going to say comma, last dot value. Uh, and in the end, we're going to close this off, we're going to say now it's sent it three times. Did you see that return string? I need to get a new keyboard, I think. Uh, it's just a closing square bracket. And in the end, we'll return the return string. That's it. And obviously, this is always in linear time, even in the best case, because you have to go through all the elements to display all the elements, linear time, even in the best case. Now, actually, for the print, I don't even, we're not going to use print. Actually, we're not going to do it, we're going to just say, representation is enough. So these are the different methods. Now let's see if I made some mistakes while implementing them. So let's go ahead and create a new linked list. LL is equal to linked list. And now let's append some values. Let's append the value 10. Now let's say we want to have five and we want to have 18 and we want to have 22 and we want to have 29. And then maybe we want to prepend, we want to say, prepend uh, 100, for example, and then I want to print LL, for example, let's see what this looks like we have 100 10 5 18 22 29 looks perfect. Now let's say I want to insert an element. So let's say I want to say LL insert. And I want to insert a value 200 at position one. So after 100. Now this also works perfect. Um, now let's say I want to delete the value 18 from the list. Now I get a problem. Okay, there is an issue with the delete function. What is that or with the delete method? Okay, I think it's quite a stupid mistake. I think here when we're checking if the value is the correct value to remove, we say that it should be removed. Otherwise, however, uh, we're not progressing. So we're not saying last next equals or actually last equals last next. I think this is what it boils down to. There you go. So now 18 is deleted. Wasn't that big of a mistake. Um, now let's go ahead and say LL pop. Now let's pop index one, which means the 200 should be gone. Now there you go. And uh, did we have anything else we have prepend insert delete pop. I mean, we can do get. So if I say, print LL get index one, 
And if I say, for example, print 29 in LL, and print, I don't know, 800 in LL. There you go. I get index one is 10. I get 29 is in LL. Yes. 800 is in LL. No. So that is how we can implement a simple single linked list. Now, how would we change this to a doubly linked list? Well, we would have to change first of all, how the node works. So we would have to say every node now doesn't have just a next pointer. Every node now also has a previous pointer. So self dot previous is none by default. And then we also have for each linked list, a tail. So self tail equals none. Now this gets tricky now, especially because you have to sometimes or the first time you add something, you have to make it the head and the tail, but then you have to always keep adjusting um, both values. So now let's call this doubly linked list. Um, now for the representation function, it doesn't really matter because to represent this, we have to go from beginning to end, the tail is not important. So we can keep this function exactly the same. Same for the contains function. If we just iterate over the list to get a certain position, it doesn't really matter. I think the same is true for the get function. The get function doesn't change at all. And the length function doesn't change. So this doesn't change. This doesn't change. This doesn't change. And this doesn't change because we don't change anything about the list. We don't have to adjust anything but we will have to change the way the append function works or method works and all the other methods that actually manipulate the content of the linked list. Now, what we need to do here is if we append a value to an empty list, we have to set the head equal to the node, but we also have to say that the tail is equal to the head. So we have to basically say now, since we just have a single element, the head and the tail of the list is the same. This is obviously the case. However, if we append something to an existing list, um, this is easier now because we just have to append it to the end. So we can actually instead of iterating here, we can say now, uh, the last note, we, we do basically the same thing that we do here with the prepend, we say the last note is now a new note with a value. The last note says that it points or has to point now to the previous node, which is the actual tail right now. So self dot tail, I'm going to show this here visually in a second again, um, safe, uh, safe self dot tail next is going to be equal to the last node. And self dot tail is now the last note. So think about it that way. Let me get my fancy drawing tablet again. Let's say we have a doubly linked list. I have this structure here. Now, of course, in both directions. And of course, we have a null pointer here and a null pointer here. Now we do have some values, it doesn't really matter. If I want to now append an element, so add an element to the end of the list. And let's say we have a uh, in the list here, we have head and we have uh, tail. Um, if I want to append an element, all I have to do is I have to create this new element, I have to make it point to the tail as a previous element, the default for the next is null anyways, or none. Uh, and now I have to just say that this element here, instead of pointing to nothing points to this new node. So maybe to, to illustrate this better, I have a new element down here. I let I let it point to the previous element, which is the current tail, I redirect the pointer of the previous element for the next element to this new element, this points to none, obviously. And I then say that the new tail of my linked list is now this. That's exactly what we did here. And this can be done in now we change the runtime complexity, this can be done in constant time, similar to the prepend constant time. Now the same is true for prepend, but we need to adjust it. So this is now basically the same um, idea, but we need to say again, if self dot head is none, uh, we need to set head and tail to 
to the same thing. So self head is going to be note value. Self tail is going to be self head. And otherwise, we do the same thing as before. Uh, so we create first notes node, last note, uh, or first note next is the head, the head um, is set to the first note. But before that, we need to say self head next is going to be equal uh, or actually no self head previous is going to be equal to the first note. Yeah, that's how we do it. And again, this remains uh, in constant time. Now for the insert, we don't really change much. The whole structure is the same. The only thing is, uh, I mean, all of this stays the same, the iteration. But in the end, we need to also adjust the previous pointer. So we say new node equals node value, new node next equals last next. But now we also need to say new node previous is equal to last. And then last next is new node. So this just means that when you insert a new node, you need to make sure that when you insert it here, it doesn't just point to the next element, it also points to the previous one. And then you adjust these pointers accordingly as well. Uh, let me just think about this again. Do we do this here? We say new note, new note next is equal to last next, new note previous is equal to last. No, actually, we need to also set the previous. We're not doing this here. My prepared code is not that prepared, it seems. So let me think about this here on the fly while I'm um, doing this. I think we need to say before we set last next equal to la uh, to new node, we need to say last next previous is equal to new node. I'm not sure about this. We're going to see if we run into problems. But I think this is what we need to do. Because as I said, uh, let's look at the uh, graph here. When I insert an element, what I want to do is I want to cut these connections or actually before I cut them, I want to create a new node, I want to say, okay, I want to point as the next element to this note that this is pointing to, I want to point to this as the previous element. But then I also want the next element here to be pointing at me and the previous element here to be pointing at me. And then I want to cut these connections. I think we're doing this now. If not, we're going to notice and fix this. I hope so. Um, delete. Now here we actually do it properly. Here we actually progress. So uh, let me see, do we have to change much? Well, when I delete an element, I have to delete the next reference, but I also have to delete the previous references. Um, so yeah, so I also don't have this prepared in my prepared code. Okay, so we have to do some things here on the fly. Seems like I didn't invest a lot of thought into my doubly linked list here. Okay, but if I'm not mistaken, the only thing that we should have to do here is we need to say last next, next previous is equal to last next. Yeah. And then last next is equal to last next next. Does this make sense? Not sure. We're going to find out if not, we're going to fix this. This is also a nice experience here. Uh, for pop, we do probably the same thing. So we just say iterate, that's fine. And then here we say last next is equal to last next next. But before that, we do last next, next, previous is equal to last. Actually, I think this is what we need to do here as well. We need to say last next next previous is equal to last not to last next, I think. And for the get we don't change anything. So let's see now. This is a doubly linked list. We're going to still call it LL. Let's see if all of this still works. First of all, yes, it produces the same results, which is good. Uh, now, how could we get this to fail? Um, by inserting and deleting. So by inserting all these values. Actually, for the insert, I should also have the case. Oh, no, actually, I don't have the length. So if I keep track of the size, I can save index of size just append. Uh, but that doesn't make a lot of sense here. So let's say instead of appending, we're going to insert, we're going to always insert. Uh, actually, I'm going to append the first one, but then I'm going to insert at position one, for example, or actually, I'm going to always insert at position one. 10. Or actually, let's use different numbers 20. 
18, 22, 88, 97, that's a zero, not a nine. And then prepend and then insert again and then try to delete 18 and try to delete 22 and try to delete five and then pop one. Let's see if this makes sense. Okay, you see, there's a problem. None type object has no attribute previous. Yeah, of course, because we need to also make sure this is now not irrelevant. If we have the um, if we have a none, we need to make sure that actually we don't try to set previous. So where did I do that? I did that with delete. So here we need to say, um, if last next next is not none, then we want to do this. And here as well, if last next next is not none. This was actually not the problem last next previous. Oh, this is an insert. Okay, so new node previous, that is the thing if last next is not none. Okay, let's double check this to see if this is what we would expect we append 10. So the first element is 10 five comes after that. So five should be after 10. 20 should be after 10. 18 should be after 10. No, actually not. Let me let me uh, let me try to see what I would do manually here to see if this actually works. So I would say 10, then I would say five, and then I would insert everything before that. So it would be 20. So it would be actually 97, 88, 22, 18, 25. Uh, then I prepend, uh, prepend 100. And then what I do is I delete 18. I delete 22. I delete five. And I pop one. So I should have 197, 88, 20. Okay, 10 is not removed. Why is 10 not removed? Or did I make a mistake here? Let me see again. Does pop not work? What happens if I don't do pop? Oh, I forgot to insert 200. So this actually should work. Yeah, okay, actually, it works. Because now I would just pop. Again, I insert all these values, then I prepend 100. But I also insert 200. So I delete 18, uh, 22 and five. Then I pop 200. Yeah, and then I end up with this. So I hope there are not any more mistakes in my implementation, but that is exactly what you would expect here. So yeah, this is how you implement a linked list and a doubly linked list in Python. I hope you were also able to understand why the runtime complexities are what they are. Uh, when we talk about runtime, runtime complexity, we always talk about worst case unless we specifically say we talk about best case and average case. But yeah, so let me know if you like this in a comment section down below. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.